Hello guys, welcome to the episode of Growth Strategies in Strategic Management. So in the last episode, I talked about external growth or expansion strategy. And in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about internal. That is internal, I've told you what is internal. Internal is like you are developing, okay? You are developing your own product or you are doing everything by yourself. So that is what is called as internal. Internal is everything coming from inside inside of the company everything is coming from the side of the company the company is doing everything okay so when it is external you just acquire somebody else who is performing better to make yourself more uh, presentable so that was external so now we are going to talk about now we are going to talk about full and full internal growth or expansion strategies so firstly i would like to tell you that in the internal segment, okay, in the internal segment, we have two classification. Number one, they are going to talk to you about expansion through intensification. See here, you have expansion through intensification. Wait a second. Here we have expansion through intensification and you have expansion through diversification. I'll tell you what intensification is a strategy where with the already uh, with the already available product and with the already established market you are trying to push more and more into the market or you are trying to um, you are you are just trying to enhance the present capability that is the intensification strategy but when we talk about the diversification you are not talking about the currently available product at all. You are trying to produce a completely new product, okay, which is not at all your available current uh, product or something like that. So, when we are talking about the internal growth, we are talking about two classification. Classification number one, we are talking about the already existing product, already existing market. Now, we are just going to push the already existing product into the market through different gimmicks. So that is called as intensification strategy. Intensification strategy is like you have come up with a product, the product is doing well, the product is very, very, very qualitative and it is being received by the audience or it is being received by the customers. But then what is, what is needed is a very greater push in terms of marketing, branding, something like that. So you want to brand yourself, okay, you want to market your products uh, well than before. So that is called as intensification strategy. But when it comes to diversification, <clears throat> Diversification is totally different. For example, have you ever heard about the steel bird helmets? Helmet or a brand, steel bird. What do you think when I talk about you have something called as steel bird makeup items or steel bird face wash, steel bird skincare essentials? So now, essentially, you and I know about steel bird as a branded helmet maker in India. Or at least I know steel maker, I mean steel bird as one of the most prominent helmet makers in India. Branded helmet makers. That is what I know of steel bird. But all of a sudden, if you come and give me a soap having a name called a steel bird, do you think it will entice me? No, it will not. But if steel bird is going to uh, start a company to manufacture skincare products, or hair care products that is a completely diversified form of uh, growth or expansion so here in this episode we are going to concentrate on expansion through intensification no now what do you mean by intensification for example when we are talking about the steel bird steel bird helmets how steel bird is going to brand itself as a helmet maker or how steel bird is going to improve the quality of the helmet or how steel bird is going to launch eight different colors for helmet for women category so when we talk about a steel bird helmet and in the helmet category we are talking about improvising the quality or improvising the reach of the helmet to the south of the country or to the east of the country or to the offline channel online channel or making the steel bird helmet available online through Amazon or Flipkart or do you think steel bird wants to open its own website to sell its own products to the customer directly rather than going through the wholesale model reta retailer or dealers or online model they want to go um, and sell the products to their customers directly that is D2C is what they call directly to the customers through their own website so here 
when we talk about steel bird is a prominent helmet maker in india and when we are talking about improving the quality of the helmet or improving the buckle quality of helmet or color variant in the helmet or the quality of the shield okay when we talk about uh, when we talk about uh, taking the helmet uh, into a branded category and in the branded you have elite category or special category or prime category or economy category but every category is going to give you uh, perfect uh, perfect safety but then the prime category or the elite category will give you some added advantage for example you have the bluetooth helmets now you wear the helmet you don't have to care about what if uh, i get a phone call i cannot talk when i put on my helmet you don't have to worry about that because now you've got the helmets with bluetooth Mm, uh, spe uh, specifications so when we're talking about how to improve the helmets from a normal helmet to a bluetooth helmet okay from a normal helmet to a smart helmet when we're talking about helmet 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 and smart helmet bluetooth enabled specifications um <clears throat> Wi-Fi calling everything when you are talking about helmet, helmet, helmet and the complete talk is all about helmet centric and you want to take the helmet to a different level by color variant for gender specifica for male and for female and for female when we are driving Vespa when I have a fluorescent green color Vespa and I want my uh, steel board helmet which is also to be fluorescent green so those type of customizations if it is done by steel bird okay so these are the things I'm talking about when I talk about intensification, intensification is already I have something and I'm going to intensify the presence. For example, when I talk about Arun ice creams, Arun ice creams is famous only in Tamil Nadu. If I talk about Arun ice creams in Maharashtra, maybe like, yeah, in the recent times, Arun ice creams or in the recent times, the Arogya milk has stepped into Maharashtra. But if I talk about the Arun ice creams in Mizoram, okay, or if I talk about the Arun ice creams in Himalayas, or in, in some part of the uh, northern part of country, they wouldn't know about the brand at all. So now, when I talk about taking Arun ice cream span India, that is uh, across India, I want to launch this uh, brand, then that is called as intensification. Already I have the product, already I have established Tamil Nadu market or uh, Hyderabad or uh, Kerala. Now I want to uh, concentrate on pan India, across India, full, full India coverage, that is called as intensification. But when I talk about, um, I don't want to produce a steel bird helmets hereafter, but I really want to produce hair care products, skin care products, something like that. And that, my girls and boys, is called as diversification, Purida. So now, in this episode, we will concentrate more on to intensification. And in the final episode, that is in episode number three, I'll talk to you about diversification. So now we are going to talk about intensification. Intensification uh, has primarily three types. And the fourth type is what they call, uh, uh, and fourth type you have one thing, I'll discuss it with you later. But now the first one, what is it? They're, call, they're calling it as market development. So all the three, uh, that is what, all the three types of intensification given in the module is market penetration, market development and product development. So first I'll talk to you about the product development. Product development is where your, uh, you have a core product. For example, we'll talk about the Royal Enfield. Have you seen the Royal Enfield bikes, right? Yeah. You've seen the Royal Enfield bikes? Yes. I can hear you. Okay. It is yes only. Nobody uh, would be like, no, I don't know any company that is uh, called as Royal Enfield. No, nobody can say. Of course, everybody knows about the Royal Enfield. Uh, but you know the uh, pathetic or uh, tragic story of Royal Enfield. Royal Enfield was like once upon a time, it was a supreme company. And in the middle, it lost its glory because of its engine fault and because of the low quality components um, that was <clears throat> involved in the production of Royal Enfield. Because of so many other uh, elements also, Royal Enfield as a company was close or it was on the brink of extinction or, or it was on the brink of closure. Uh, it was like actually only 2000 bikes were being sold for one full month. So this, the, so, so the condition was so bad in the middle, okay. But in the recent times, in I mean like uh, uh, Royal Enfield was again revived by Siddharth Lal from the Lal family. If, have you ever heard about the uh, company called as Iker company, E-I-C-H-E-R, Eicher company or Eicher, Eicher, whatever you pronounce it as. Um, Eicher Motors, that Eicher Motors family, that is Eicher Motors is, uh, um, is a company. 
okay and the promoter family is called as lal family and from that family siddharth lal he was um, he was posted as ceo for royal enfield there is this two wheeler segment okay and uh, when siddharth lal took over his position as ceo of royal enfield he first of all encountered lots of problems with royal enfield of course royal enfield when they has a good name it, it has a goodwill and it is always a uh, a product to be looked up okay uh, you really want to own a royal enfield but then it lost its market it lot it, it has lost its glory because of what so first siddharth lal uh, went on several bike trips and uh, he was asking lots and lots of people who used royal enfield uh, when it was at its peak of its glory in 19 late 1990s and all that or uh, in the 1980s or mid 1970s and all that 70s 80s 90s okay so those who were uh, owning the cars when it was uh, when it before it lost its glory so he went on lot of bike trips and he was asking the people um, what was their close connection with the bike do they still love the bikes do they still love royal and field and what is what was the most attractive feature about the the uh, royal and field and why they could not uh, think about any 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 other bike in the place of royal and field even though they had pulsar they had so many honda bikes and hero bikes but then none of the other bikes could fill the vacuum created by royal and field and he took the bike trips and he came to a conclusion that the royal and field still had its charisma all across the bike lovers so siddharth lal okay what he did was he wanted to completely revive the royal and field he just completely changed the engine okay from the old engine he changed it to a new engine uh, fully aluminum based and then he recruited uh, and then he recruited lots and lots of new research and development experts and he also had a consultant uh, from the europe okay uh, avl technologies i guess i don't know i really do not know the exact name but then he uh, he had a consultant from europe and they were designing the entire new new look of royal enfield and all the supplies of royal enfield all the components of the royal enfield bike were completely <clears throat> was was completely whitewashed and new sets of suppliers was brought into the uh, frame and all the suppliers were now being compelled for super quality of all the components as a result as a result the royal enfield was launched after revival uh, in the year 2002 i guess in the name of thunderbird and after that there was no looking back uh, in 2013 or in 2014 the royal enfield reached its top glory and till now royal enfield has its own place with its customers okay so now what are we talking about here we're talking about a brand we're talking about uh, we're talking about a logo we're talking about a brand we're talking about a company that had a product called as royal enfield and it was at its top and because of some issues it has lost its glory and it was at its brink of extinction or brink of um, uh, closure and after that one of the third level or third generation entrepreneur from the lal's family has come to revive the royal enfield altogether and now there is no looking back it is all a super duper success story do you know in order to fund or in order to fund this uh, royal enfield revival each a company um, that is the siddharth lal's family held nearly 40 different companies okay and siddharth lal literally sold off uh, nearly 30 companies okay 30 companies were were sold off by siddharth lal and he took all the fund from all the 30 sale of the units 30 near to 30 i guess 30 different companies has been handed over to others that is he sold off all the other 30 companies and he took all the money and then he invested he nurtured royal enfield with all the sale money this was the conviction that siddharth lal had towards royal enfield he felt that yes this two wheeler segment can be revived again and he did not want to concentrate on 30 or 40 different companies a uh, clothing company textile company leather company 
okay this company that company the lal's family had 40 different sectors or 40 different companies in different sectors so he wanted to streamline all the 40 companies or 30 companies okay and then he wanted to concentrate only on two wheeler segment so the eacher motors only held some of the very crucial uh, some of the very 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 crucial uh, segments or some of the very crucial companies with it, with them and all the other uh, uh, completely completely i would call those textile companies and leather companies and uh, clothing companies had nothing to do with the motor company so siddharth lal what he did was he sold out all the other units and made money through sale money and through the sale money he revived royal enfield that was the conviction that siddharth lal had now throughout this episode i'm going to i i have talked to you about only royal enfield royal enfield royal enfield so this is what i call as product development <clears throat> we we score a product and that product is royal enfield and we are talking about royal enfield improvisation components um, uh, that is the engine specification engine design you have a consultant from europe okay you are talking about the research and development team in india the research and development team that you asked to come from europe so you do lots and lots of activities you are uh, you are having a blueprint for your development but you are all cordially, you are all having a very, very, very rhythmic development of what? About a product. Everybody is working towards the development of a product and that product is Royal Enfield. So, when all you do is to develop your product, change the specification, change the, mo change the module or change its appearance, um, because you are launching the bike in 2002, that is in 21st century you are launching the bike. So, the users of 21st century are sure going to be different from that of the 19th or 20th century, which means your appearance of the bike has to be different and it has to be updated. It has to, it has to have the capability to fight with their comparisons or rivals. So, uh, if, when you talk about Pulsar or when you talk about any other bikes other than Royal Enfield in the 2020s or in 2021, 2022, Royal Enfield should have the capability to have a rival fight with all its rivalries. So that is the expectation of Siddharth Lal and the customers are so satisfied that even the warranty claims have reduced because all the component quality has been improvised. So now we are talking about product development. We are only talking about how to improvise the product, how to develop the core product into a more presentable, more value addition to the customers. So, when you talk about product, when you are intensifying, you already have a product called as Royal, Enf Royal Enfield and you are intensifying your approach, you are intensifying your effort to launch an updated version of your existing product would mean we are talking about product development. Okay, I think you are all very clear about this topic uh, and with this gained knowledge, you can go and read the book lines, you will obviously be ending up with so much of enlightened knowledge. And number two, we are going to see what is the number two in intensification. We have finished this product development. We have finished the example that I have given you is Royal Enfield. Number two, we are going to develop the market. Market. So now I will give you the example of, I uh, will give you the example of what? I have taken some examples. Wait, I will see. I <clears> will <throat> take the example of Firebolt. Firebolt is the best example for market development because uh, we have this headphones, right? Um, I'll, I'll tell you what. We have this um, headphones company called as Noise and then you have this Firebolt, B-O-L-T-T -T, I guess, okay, or B-O-L-L-T, something like that. So, Firebolt, Noise and Bolt. I'm sorry, it will be like this, I guess, okay, Bolt. All the three companies, okay, all the three companies are in electronics sector. What electronics? Consumer electronics. So, all these three companies have launched smart watches and then headphones and all the consumer electronics for you. So, way back when we talked about, uh, when we talk about some headset, okay, in 2015 or in 2002, 2003, 2004 and all, when we talk about headset, it was like a audio audio gadget, audio device, something like that when you want to hear some tape recording as a video evidence or audio evidence, you want to hear to that, that is always called as an audio device or video device or a gadget. But today, boat, noise, 
firebolt has made a new technology statement like it, it, it has all become a lifestyle brand now for example i'm asking you i'm giving you a t-shirt in which you have a printed logo of asian paints can you wear it no you cannot wear it because it is a brand asian paints is a brand nobody denies that but asian paints still it's not a lifestyle brand okay you cannot wear a t-shirt with a logo of asian paint but you can wear a t-shirt having a logo of boat or noise or firebolt why because these uh, for example you can wear a t-shirt of, of an apple symbol right or you can wear a t-shirt having a boat symbol why because these brand they didn't they are they they are not just projecting themselves as audio electronics something like that company they are all projecting themselves as a lifestyle company where all these gadgets are going to add value to your life okay it's like boat plug into nirvana boat plug into nirvana where they are asked where they are asking you to plug into plug your uh, ears with the earphones and then you have to pull off all your worries and then get into that mode of nothing to worry about that's all that is all the tagline of boat so here all these three companies that we're going to talk about there is boat uh, firebolt noise uh, everything they are very sure about one thing all the three companies are importing the headphones all these three companies are importing the smart watches from china and they are rebranding it okay they import from china they brand it as firebolt they brand it as boat they brand it as noise that's all and then they are selling it in india so now there is no difference in the playbook playbook is what do you call playbook na abdina playbook is where what is the uh, what is the strategy uh, i would call how do you call it? playbook is the way how companies function boat is importing from china and selling it in india firebolt is also importing from china selling it in india noise is also importing from china selling it in india what is different in these three it is only the branding you use a boat products na the innovation the way the colors are being see for example everything is manufactured in china uh, which means boat will tell this is the color i want this is the specification i want these are all the ways in which i want my product to be manufactured products will be manufactured in china and it will be imported from china and will be sold in india so what is the difference uh, between these three uh, companies boat initially when they sold the headphones or headsets it was like wired headsets okay uh, wired headsets so wired headsets it was always tangling always it has it will be tangled so we really have to take all we have to detangle the entire headset and then we have to plug into the ears so boat came up with the technology or boat came up with an idea where introducing the wire in a flat wire model so the wire when it is flat uh, the probability of getting it in, entangled it is very 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 less so first boat introduced wired headsets and then they modified the wire into a flat wire okay flat wire and then they talked about a truly wireless headset so all the innovation and idea and design will come from boat and then the manufacture will happen in china and it will be imported from china to india and they'll name the brand as uh, boat and they will sell it in india same with firebolt also firebolt will also tell you what color what specification etc 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 but then the entire uh, entire um, product is being um, produced in china and it is being imported to india and it is being sold here same with noise also there is no other escapism you can ask ma'am this is all full of anti nationalism we are not even producing in india why are we not producing in india do you think boat firebolt and noise are quack people uh, do you think they are foolish people to uh, produce in China and then import it to India and sell here? If the production is possible in India, they would have done it here, right? And the production capabilities in India right now is not eccentrically uh, with that of China. We have some backlash of our own that we will discuss in a separate chapter but still. Now all these three companies are designing their products in India or to some extent they innovate their design to some extent, okay? Uh, the designing aspect is not fully under your control you design to some extent and then you give the contract to china and the chinese contractors produce boat firebolt and noise and then they send it to india and then you just stick it with boat firebolt noise and you stick it you sell it but then recently you know who sold most of the headphones in india uh, among these three players it was firebolt it was not boat it was not noise it is actually firebolt which sold majority or maximum number of 
स्मार्ट वॉचेस डू यू नो वाई बिकॉज बीओएटी कंपनी देर इज बोट एंड नॉइज वंदे कंसंट्रेटेड मोर ऑन ऑनलाइन प्रेजेंस वेर इज फायर बोल्ट just entered into the field play where lots and lots of offline stores and offline presence was made possible in the recent 3 to 4 years as a result 70% of fire bolt node sales comes from smaller towns and cities so now this is what i called as market development market development or i would call we are changing the game so far we were available only on online now firebolt is concentrating more on to offline presence because 70% of their sales are now from offline so smaller towns smaller cities smaller cantonment boards where the online presence is not as huge as as huge as you imagine um that might be so their people are now uh, displayed all the store fronts in the smaller towns villages and in the smaller cities are now having stores where the store front are now being displayed with firebolt or smart watches so obviously when you are having a very 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 sensible play in the offline area automatically your sales have skyrocketed so this i call as market development market development is like you are reaching out to people in different ways um by moving from online presence to offline presence or uh, for example firebolt recently assigned with virat kohli virat kohli um, i see 360 degree rolling menu hd full touch round dial and all that it is for firebolt so now you are boarding lots of uh, celebrities Uh, from what celebrities from cine there is bollywood celebrities or from sports celebrity cricket celebrities you are just roping all of them inside your brand and your brand is now more visible to a large number of people for example ipl vivo ipl before vivo uh, sponsored this ipl league uh, there is ipl vivo phones sold 10 phones were sold in which kongle after the sponsorship of ipl vivo was able to sell 100 phones which means before and after effect was tremendously huge before they sold 10 phones after they phone, after the ipl launch 100 people were buying vivo why because ipl as a league um, as a cricket league had its audience to the nook and corner of india which means ipl's ad or sponsors were becoming more as a household name into large number of village as a result more number of people were now uh, more familiar with the brand name called as vivo as a result vivo was able to sell more number of phones after ipl so now i would call vivo ipl after ipl sales and then firebolt roping in virat kohli as a brand ambassador or as a celebrity face and then launching offline stores and offline presence pushing the offline presence these are all the ways in which you can develop your market reach you can develop from uh, you are known only to the online online audience you have to go to the offline audience you are only known in the urban areas you are not known in the village areas go and sponsor the ipl okay um, uh, you are not known to many people because you are lacking the marketing and branding so then ropen ropen is like bring in people from bollywood and from the cricket so that many people will be familiar with your products so these are the steps that you take in order to make yourself more more visible so making you more visible in the market is called as market development it is called as market development and finally we are going to talk about market penetration what is market penetration market penetration is you are going deep into the market you're going deep into the market i'll tell you what i'll tell you the best example for market penetration market penetration best example is arun ice cream if you are very well accustomed with tamil nadu in tamil nadu arun ice creams has created a brand for itself will you believe that i backo is also a product of arun ice cream but we will never be able to see arun ice cream parlor hosting i backo ice creams or we cannot buy Arun Ice Creams in a I Backo parlor because I Backo is a premium quality ice cream parlor and Arun Ice Cream is a economy class ice cream parlor. 
So basically, when, when I come to talk about this market penetration, we're actually talking about something here. Penetration is like already you're present in the market, there is no doubt, but you're trying to push your product into the nook and corner of the country. So how do you do it? How do you do it? So now market penetration concentrates more on to distribution channel or having a retailer. Um, I'll tell you what is the difference between market penetration and market development. Market penetration is like it talks more about the infrastructure. How do I make my product available in this place, that place, this location, that location, urban location, rural location. So market penetration is all about the locality, location, reach, outreach, market penetration. When we talk about market development, it is all about we are only present in this level. We really have to develop this. Market development is like I'm going to hire some professionals. I'm going to rope in Virat Kohli. I'm going to advertise. I'm going to do the marketing. I'm going to do the branding. I'm going to do some something in order to make myself visible. So more of branding, I would call it as market development. But more of making a product reach the customers, I would call as market penetration. Market penetration is like making the people, even in the villages, be able to buy your product. So that is market reach. Penetrate into the market and then make your products available there. So that is called as market penetration. Market development is like make your product more visible to people. Make yourself, your brand to be visible in the eyes of the people. So this is how, this is how we, uh, we, we learn about these products. Okay, we learn about these strategies. Uh, we talked about Royal Enfield. Okay, Royal Enfield is the best example for product development. And we also studied about, wait a second, I'll help you with this. Yeah. One second, I'll show you one thing. Yeah. Look at this one. Yes. Now, <clears throat> I'll share the screen with you. So here you have this product uh, market expansion grid. In this number one, there is market penetration. How do you do this? You have to increase the market share. You have to increase the product usage, increase the frequency used, increase the quantity used, find new application for current users. So here you're trying to you're trying to make the users buy your product more and you're concentrating on to reach the product to more users. So this is all about market penetration. But when it comes to market development, we are targeting the new segments, we are targeting new people, we are targeting the entire set of audience. It's like, uh, for example, I'll tell you the best example. You know about a product, but in your area, that product is not available. So now where are you lacking? You're lacking in market penetration and not in market development. Your market is already developed. Everybody knows about the Vivo phone. But if I go to the mobile store, I'm not able to get the Vivo phone because that dealer is not having a Vivo phone in his shop. Now whose fault is it? The fault is from the side of the Vivo because Vivo has developed the market, but it did not penetrate into the village. So now what happens is that penetration is making a product available and market development is development is making a product known to the people. Okay, so here development we talk about um, expanding geographically and targeting the new segments. Okay, this is what is the most important thing. And finally, we have also product development. I'm talking to you about the Royal Enfield. And if all these three are fully uh, achieved, you have developed your product, there's nothing to develop in your product fresh. You've already developed extremely well. Okay, so you've, you've developed your Royal Enfield to the fullest extent. Okay, market penetration, you've made your product available even to the nook and corner of the um, uh, for demand, wherever there is a demand, there is a Royal Enfield available. Okay, you have made that also. And then you have made many of the Indians to know about the Royal Enfield. So now the brand visibility is very clear. There is uh, there is nothing you could do more in order to make your brand much more visible. So everything you have done. So what are you going to do next? Obviously, you have to diversify because here everything is just saturated. So they talk about market penetration, market development, and then product development. And finally, if all these three are fulfilled, then just go on to some other sector. I'll give an example. When once Royal Enfield is developed into a full product, as in like wholesome product, and then market penetration is reached and market development is also reached for Royal Enfield. Now what Royal Enfield should do? Royal Enfield should project itself not just as a bike. 
okay you should have some flagship store for example you should have a store experience once i come to the store to buy some royal enfield you should also have a helmet which is exclusively customized for royal enfield bike if i bike a camouflaged uh, royal enfield bike i would also buy i would also like to buy camouflaged um, helmet so royal enfield should now diversify into manufacturing of helmets and then you will be having a gloves right when you drive the bike when you ride the bike ride on the bike you really will get a very hard palm so in order to avoid that you have to wear the gloves so why not royal enfield okay why not royal enfield diversify itself and produce gloves and then helmets and then all the bike accessories in order to make itself project as a a bike ride ecosystem not just as a bike alone now if you go into a, a royal enfield experience store okay you have a experience store i'll show you the royal enfield flagship store uh, it is also called as an experience store here if you go you will have lots of royal enfield bikes to view and then you will also have lots of mobile uh, that is what bike accessories okay lot of uh, helmets see you have helmets and the jackets that you wear while uh, mountain trekking and uh, mountain ride alam pomudu you will be wearing that exclusive um, jackets okay winter jackets and all that so they have this jackets here yes wait wait a second i'll just copy this image we'll go here we'll paste it here and i'll tell you what see this is the flagship store here you have this wait a second okay here you have this helmet portion helmets okay i think the screen is shared with you yes okay and here you have the bike of course you have this bike so here you have your come on man mm, i'll take this color here you have your helmets here you have your bike here you have your jacket okay and here you have lots of your t-shirts and what not everything you have here right so this is like creating an ecosystem how did royal and field come to this kind of diversification this kind of diversification is like uh, they are they were actually producing bikes but now they are also into by they are also into helmets and then the jackets and then um, something else okay they are diversifying themselves into these many things so what do you call these see i'll tell you what here it's not that the jacket is being uh, manufactured by royal and field they can buy the jacket from outside they can just put the emblem of uh, that is they can put just the put i mean they can just put the logo of royal enfield into that and they can put it on display so it's not that you have to manufacture in house you can just give it to a contractor he will produce it you will just uh, use your royal enfield tag to sell the jacket royal enfield tag into that helmet you might not be originally helmet maker but then you want to display the royal enfield helmets in your experience store so what you do is you diversify yourself you uh, ask a subcontractor or a contractor to produce the helmets for you and then you label it label it with uh, royal enfield uh, logo and then you sell it off so now this is called as diversification because now you're not talking about bike you're talking about helmets you're talking about jacket you're talking about all the uh, mob, uh, like what bike accessories so when you're talking about these things we are talking about diversification so intensification we talked about market penetration market development and product development when all these categories are saturated you come to diversification and here i would like to tell you this diversification that we're talking about uh, uh, here we are talking about which diversification bike diversification that is royal and field diversifying into helmets or uh, jackets or the coats or any other bike accessories this is a diversification which is very 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 uh, very 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 um, connected to its original pro original product is bike okay original product is bike now royal enfield is diversifying to produce jacket it might be originally a textile industry but this jacket comes as a as a complementary product for riding a bike so helmet is nowhere related to a bike but to ride a bike you need a helmet so helmet jacket and then all the other products here with bike accessories 
these are all forming the complementary ecosystem. So, when Royal Enfield is diversifying itself uh, also into producing these other complementary products, you call this as a concentric diversification. You have diversified from bike, no doubt, but this diversification has something to do with the original product called as bike. Bike, helmet, complementary. So, you enter into uh, helmet production. Bike, helmet, leather jacket. You enter into leather jacket production, complementary good. You have some bike accessory, you want to produce it, that is also a complementary good. So, when one producer is starting to diversify himself into the production of those goods which would add value to the original product called as bike, it is called, it is called as concentric. What is it? It is called as concentric diversification. I will tell you what is concentric. Concentric circle you have heard about, this is called as concentric. This is bike. Okay, this is helmet, this is the jacket, all three are different in nature, but these three will be worn by one single man when he wants to ride a bike. So, jacket as a product is different from helmet, helmet as a product is different from bike, bike as a product is different from jacket, but all these three will be put together when you have a bike ride. So, simply put bullet to bullet to song now. So, it is an ecosystem, creation of an ecosystem. Okay, this creation of ecosystem is called as concentric, concentric diversification. Okay, wow. okay, thank you so much. I think in this episode, I have covered more than enough for explaining um, about intensification strategy where we have come across market penetration, market development product development and finally diversification and away uh, as a side object we have also covered one topic called as concentric diversification and I feel very happy that I was that I was able to do this today okay uh, in the next episode episode number three we will talk the entire uh, uh, structure about what not intensification intensification we have finished so, the next episode we will talk about diversification, okay, diversification we will talk about. In the diversification we have, of course, we have this concentric conglomerate and then integration, like forward integration, backward integration and then vertical horizontal uh, growth strategy, everything we have. We will see all these things tomorrow probably, okay. Thank you so much for your patience listening and please do stay tuned and support uh, this channel because this channel is not profit oriented. Any money if you think that I am going to earn in future, it is all going to a trust where we are going to help people study, help children study okay, without any monetary or other problems. So, this is not at all profit oriented, this is entirely uh, an NPO setup. Okay, Thank you so much, please do support us in future. All the best.